Yeah. Which camera are we looking at? Well, anyone you want. I mean, more than likely, you should be looking at this one. This one's coming at you or the middle one, too. Okay. All right, we're good to go? All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody, to Season 3, Episode 9 of The Movement. The Movement. We are officially live, ready to get the show on the road. Ali wasn't ready for that. Ali, yeah, you got to be ready. Ali, we're going to hit you with that. Uh, so, listen, we're going to have a great show for you guys. Looking forward to a great episode. Uh, looking forward to hearing what our guests have to say today. First of all, I want to introduce everybody that's in the building. Starting off with the person in the back hitting the ones and twos, which is the nephew, Ramzi Ali. Ramzi, give yourself a round of applause for all the great work that you you do big rams we appreciate you ramsey you know what i'm saying and then to the right of me you got zach that aka big general all right so shout out to the big general zach that he's in the building uh hamza's laughing and shaking his head at the same time shout out to big hams he's in the building as well you know rocking the humble sports gear as you guys can see we're all rocking the humble sports gear uh then to the right of me you got little big bro yusuf that usually behind the scenes hitting the ones and twos for the other episodes but for the movement you know he's right here next to me of course you got myself omar t then to the left of me our first guest of today is dean nasser go ahead and give dean a round of applause he is the founder slash owner of humble sports and then to the left of him we have ali hamoud mr lockdown in the building today hey listen we came to the show and ali wasn't even letting anybody come in the studio that's how he was locking him down we had to we had to like let him know they're actually part of the show so shout out to ali he's in the building today uh well go ahead he's holding me holding yeah we got we get we threw a penalty all right but that said like i said today we're going to talk about branding yourself we're going to talk about mma we're going to talk about jujitsu we're going to talk about forts in high school and you know playing football for high school and everything else in between but before we dive into that uh, first of all, be sure to follow us on all of our socials. You have YouTube, Oz Media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok under Oz Media. You can listen to our shows on Apple and Spotify podcasts under Oz Media. The, obviously, the episode will be dropping after we get done with the show. If you want to call in, the number is 313-306-1750. I got my phone right here with me. Again, 313-306-1750. We also got to give a shout out to all of our sponsors. You know, we appreciate the sponsors for their support. Without them, there is no Oz Media at the end of the day. So shout out to all of our sponsors, the Balkan House, Juice Box, Kahwa House, BC Adhesives, Specialty Medical Center, Hanley International Academy, and Sid B's. So go ahead and give a shout out to Sid B's Ramsey. We got to give a shout out to the best honey company in town, which is Sid B's. We appreciate Osama. We had Osama on the show. So shout out to Sid B's, and then we're going to officially get this episode on the road. So shout out to Sid B's. All right, Yusuf, it looks like we have a little dilemma in our hands. We have this deliciously smelling sabaya right in front of us, but it looks like we're missing one important thing. Yeah, it looks like we're missing some acid, you know, some honey. And you know where the best place to go to for honey? That is Sid the Bees. Sid the Bees is a remarkable company that stands at the forefront of the honey industry. With an unwavering commitment to quality, being authentic, and sustainability, Sid the Bees has carved its name as a trusted provider of premium honey products. The company's dedication to preserving the purity of honey is evident in every jar they produce. Sid Bees sets a standard that goes beyond taste. It's a brand that captures nature's essence and brings it to the discerning consumers who appreciate the true goodness that honey offers. Sid Bees is not just a honey company, it's a testament to the beauty of nature and the passion to deliver excellence in every drop. All right, we're officially back. So like I said, we're here with Dean and Ali. Uh, they are in the building today. So shout out to Dean. We'll start off with you, Dean. Can you let the audience know a little bit about yourself, you know, who you are, what you do, and everything else in between, man? Yeah, my name is Dean Nasser. I'm founder of Humble Sports. We highlight high school athletes, and we got guys like Ali Hamoud over here. We try to follow them, get their highlights. See, hopefully, they do a great play. We post on Instagram. That's, that's basically what we revolve around is highlighting athletes. And we also got our clothing brand that you guys are wearing. Thanks, thanks a lot for wearing it. Of course, man. Thanks for giving it to us, man. This is some nice, this is some nice quality clothes, by the way. They're 100% cotton. And uh, that's about it, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm you grew up, yeah. grew up in Dearborn area, yeah, right? I grew up in Dearborn. I graduated from Fortson in 2007. I wrestled for four years over there. And after that, I transferred to a gym in uh, Redford Township okay. called Mash Gym. I trained there for about a year. I was 3-0, and, and I did three jiu-jitsu tournaments. I won all three. And then uh, that's how I became fighting. I was, I was fighting after wrestling. 
So wrestling and fighting are they go hand in hand. Yeah, because it's part of the martial arts. You got no boxing, Muay Thai, and that's uh, that's about me. You know, I'm from former fighter, former jujitsu guy, former wrestler. And now I'm founder of Humble Sports. Which one do you like better, MMA or uh, jujitsu? Uh, MMA. MMA. I, mean, I think I was better at MMA than jujitsu because not a lot. The competition is, is not like that in jujitsu because everybody doesn't mind getting in jujitsu yeah. and not getting hurt. But in MMA, you you're bound to get hurt. Like I never got hurt before. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And but people always getting hurt left and right. Even in football, like that's one of the thing I hate about sports: the injuries. Yeah. But, but you got you got to keep going. Even if you get injured, you, gotta, you know you got to keep going. For sure, man. And then. You know, I mean, not to go from a transition to injury, Ali Hamoud, but, you know, you're just telling us about how you got injured on the football field. But first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what grade you're in, what school you go to, and then, um, you know, whatever, you, stuff that you enjoy doing on the side as well. My name is uh, Ali Hamoud, and I go to Fortson. I'm a senior at Fortson. I grew up in Dearborn. I lived here my whole life so far. And uh, I play football at Fortson. I'm a, I just, our season just ended right now. I played there for four years. Yep. And uh, now I'm looking to play college ball, inshallah. Inshallah. Yep, and that's pretty much it. I just play football now. Nice. Now so, yeah, so you, uh, first of all, do you have plans next year to play at a specific place yet? Or are you? Uh, I don't know where yet, but uh, I'm training for it. I'm working, and I'm just getting ready to play college ball. And how do the coaches, you know, at Fortson, because I know Fortson is a very, it's a very strong program in the state of Michigan. It's well known, uh, especially for their football. Yes. Uh, so, you know, how do the coaches, if you want to maybe even give them a shout out right now, like how do they prepare you for the next level and what steps do they take to make sure that their athletes, if they want to make it to the next level, you know? You know, uh, Coach O's kind of took over this year and he's just, the discipline and just the hard work that they make us go through and waking up early almost every day and then going to school from waking up early, it just prepares us for playing college ball and it just prepares us for everything basically. Waking up for a job and going to practice for about seven, eight hours a day, going for about three, four and then taking a break and then coming back. It's just, you know, it's all discipline. So it just prepares us for everything. And then they just help us get our name out there. Coach Hamid, um, Coach Osman, all of them. They help us talk to college coaches. College coaches come in, in and out of the building. A lot of college coaches, big college coaches, Eastern, Michigan, Grand Valley, Ferris, all those coaches come through the building while we're working out, in and out. And that's what that's what uh, separates from good programs to great programs, to me, in my opinion, is, you know, to me, if I am, uh, you know, a, a father of a student, athletes, of a kid that, you know, wants to play at the next level, I want them to attend a school that's going to do what it takes for them to make it to that next level um, and make sure that they have those opportunities. And it sounds like Fortson is one of those programs that give you those opportunities. So 100%. shout out to Fortson for sure. Uh, I want to give a check in with these guys to the right of me as well from the Movement Podcast, all rocking their humble sports gear. We're all rocking the shirts. I know they're looking clean in them right now, too. It's the best it's the best I've seen Zach look in a long time, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. Zach, what's going on with you? Checking in with you. How you been since uh, last week? I think, yeah, last week. Everything good with you, Zach? Make sure you grab the mic or at least speak into the mic, too, Zach. Everything good? Yes, sir. Anything new from you, Zach? Everything straight? You said Basically, you asked him a question, Ali, before the show. You asked him if he can lock you down. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's true, you know, because I don't think nobody can lock me down you know, I feel like I, <laughs> I want two black football championships. Two black football championships. Uh, I think it had a lot to do with your coach, Zach. Your coach was executing the right uh, game plan for you to be successful in winning those flag football championships. Hamza, Hamza, what can you catch, Hamza? That boy can't even catch a cold these days. <laughs> now, shout out to Hamza. We all sleeping on Hamza. Hamza is solid. Solid player. We'll do his thing. Right? Oh, look at that. Hamza, we have a caller. We have a caller. But go ahead, Hamza. Everything good with you? I'm black can't complain, man. Everything smooth? Yep. All right, hold on. Let's see. Let's see who's this. Who's who's calling in right now? Hey, good morning. Good morning, Nader. How are you, sir? Good, good, good. Everything okay, Nader? Yes. Um, I just want to say two things before the, before you check in, Nader. Hold on oh, one second. Wait, yeah. This is not about football. It is. It is about football. Oh. Yeah. Is it? Yes. So okay. two things, Nader. Number one. Uh, uh -huh. we, we have we have Dean Nasser here, who's the founder of Humble Sports, and then we have Ali Hamoud, who's a senior from Fortson High School, who played football oh. at Fortson. But funny story is uh, Dean was like, man, you guys had Rashida Tlaib on the show? And so I mentioned, I was like, yo, this guy Nader, 
you know, that's her brother, and he he actually was the middleman, and he hooked us up to get her on the show. So it's yeah, funny. She, she, it was it was a it was a nice show. And it's funny it because nice you know we mentioned you, and now Nader is calling. So shout out to Nader. Any, I, I really I thought of this was about fantasy. Maybe I'm <laughs> off, but uh, you're one day off. Uh, Fortson, yeah, my my wife graduated from Fortson. Yeah, Nader, did you play football Fortson. in high school? No, 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 no. I didn't play any sports. You're not a no. you, you. You didn't play. I mean, well, I wouldn't. I, try, I, I tried. I tried to play basketball, but there there was no no way. <laughs> Well, uh, this guy's actually a good hooper, uh, by the way. He's actually a good athlete too. So I'm surprised that he didn't play any sports in high got, school. You got to remember, you got to remember, Jalen Rose, Vashawn Leonard, Howard Isley, they all went to my high school. So it was, uh, uh, <laughs> it was like a when I was going there, it was like a super super team, national super team. So what school was that, Nader? Uh, Detroit Southwestern. Nice. So do you have any advice for these guys that are sitting here? You got a bunch of young fellas here, you know, just sitting here. They 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 need to know what it takes to be a super duper elite Nader because Nader is super duper elite. I mean, brother. listen, edu you know, uh, uh, sports is good, but education is more important. There you I, go. I agree with you. So make sure <laughs> ma make sure one hundred percent education is your first priority. I agree with them, one hundred percent. That that's the number one. Uh, that's the number one advice I can give. You know, they say um, Nader has a nation behind him. They call it Nader oh, Nation. Yeah, I do. And so yeah, yeah, this I is do. why there's a nation behind Nader because he's a man of the people. Yes, yes, I am. And, and for grades? justice in the league. Grades this year, they good. Yeah, yeah, how are your grades, Ali? Is your grades good? Yeah, two point five. Two point five, not bad, not bad. That's not bad. Three point yeah. five. Oh, is it 3.5? Oh, okay. I'm not surprised. He's very smart. Like, yeah. Tell all the reads on defense, on offense. <laughs> he's making all the right reads, always in the right spot. Very good player. He, uh, he plays, uh, who, who's the coach there? Oh, Zabon. Zabon and Oz. Coach Zabon uh, no, uh, and Oz. Do you know them? Okay. Later? Who, who, which one's Walker? Uh, Zabon. Okay, Zabon. Yeah, I, I know his, uh, his father-in-law very well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good Nate, guy, good guy. Nader, any final comments? Any final message? Yeah. Um. So, how did Forsen do this year? We did all right. We could, uh, you know, our yeah. team wasn't very healthy. A lot of people got hurt, which hurt the team. So. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I watched the game. Uh, actually, the Dearborn game. Yeah. And uh, there was a, 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 he was a little guy. I think he was number number four or number twenty. I, maybe number four. Yeah. Number very four fast. Aggressive. Very fast, right? Uh yeah, I'm number twenty, and then uh the running back was number oh, four. Oh okay, okay, mashallah, you guys. Uh, and there was also a guy that was hurt uh, who was on crutches too. They said he was a, was he a quarterback? Um no, we don't have we didn't have nobody on crutches. Oh okay, I don't know. maybe it's the Dearborn side, but it was a good game. Yeah, it was, I always wa I always love watching Fortson. Yeah, thank you. I pre we appreciate yeah. it. Nader, thank you no so problem. much for the phone calls, Nader. Right, okay, real quick, uh, Omar. Wh when is the fantasy? When do we talk about the fantasy? It's tomorrow, same time, eleven thirty. Okay, okay. All right, guys. Appreciate you, Nader. Bye. All right, bye. All right, we have Savage the Prankster said, "Yes, sir, the best DB in the nation." All right, that's what he said. Uh, best DB in the nation. So shout out to you. You're getting the shout outs right now. Go ahead, Zay. What are you about to say? Is that about to say something? He said he knows MMA and Jiu Jitsu, right? Yeah. yeah. How fast can you put me in headlock? How fast put you in headlock? Yeah. yeah. Headlock's not really that It's not that effective of a move Headlock's just taking you down It's like a wrestling move Just taking you down yeah, so how, But I, I wouldn't need to do that I'd just to grab your legs I'd grab, just okay. snatch your legs One leg at a time Or I could upper body you And just I don't know I'm, you're, you're more my size You know what I'm saying I've been doing it since 14 yeah. I'm 34 right now I've been doing it So I'm very like I'm very good with body movement My balance <clears throat> Not getting taken down yeah. Good at boxing You know what you, they call me though Huh? You know what they call me? What? I guess hands You know Hands? Like <laughs> hands? Yeah. yeah, you probably get me with the hands. You get better chance of hands than the wrestling. The wrestling's where I, that's my bread and butter. Wrestling and jujitsu. So, so you're saying you would beat him, right? I think so. Would you how beat about, both how about of like, us? Like, like both of you guys? Two v one. I would be a dog fight. It'd okay. be a dog fight. I wouldn't be that easy, but it would be a dog fight. I'm not gonna lie. How about how about like just boxing? Just boxing. Yeah. Uh, uh, not, to be honest, I'm not that great at boxing. I was more known for wrestling and jujitsu. Oh, yeah. But it'd be it'd be more competitive. You, you're that's, that's best best route going boxing. Not going to jiu-jitsu or wrestling because I know how, everything about the wrestling because I did it for a long time. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, the branding part, right? So what made you want to start your own sporting brand, and what was that process like? If you don't mind sharing that with us, Dana. First, I, I started selling shirts exactly in '09 when I had my first fight, as my second fight actually. 
Some girl commented, oh, you should wear shirts to your fight. We're bringing shirts to your fight. I'm like, I first thought about it. I was like, no way. I'm not bringing no shirts to my fight. If I get my ass kicked, I'm going to look stupid as hell. I wear my shirt and I get my ass kicked. And then she was like, no, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And I was like, I did it. I sold tickets and shirts. And those shirts, every shirt I had, Team Machine, the brand was called Team Machine. Because they just called me Machine when I used to fight. And those shirts were selling out like crazy. Everybody wants to come to my fight. I had a lot of supporters, friends, family. I come from a big family. And everybody was coming to my fights and buying shirts. And I did that in uh, 09, 010. Then at 13, when I fought Joe Lewis, I sold out again shirts. I bought like 100 shirts, sold out of them. Then 15, I did it again. We didn't have that good a year 15 when I fought. But it was a title fight for an amateur title fight. And we sold out about 50 shirts of Team Machine shirts and tickets. Then I want to, I want to get I want to change the name from Team Machine. I wasn't gonna fight anymore. I want to what, what I could relate to like and what I could relate to. I was humble when I was fighting, and I really like Khabib because when Khabib was talking one time, he was like, "Yeah, all these guys when they get famous, they forget they're not humble anymore. They forget about God. They forget about everything." And Khabib was like, "You gotta remain humble when you when you, whatever you're doing." And I was really inspired by that. That's where I get the name humble from. That's I mean, sports just came with all sports I've been playing since I was a young kid, yeah. eight years old. So that's why I just put humble sports. It was a catchy name. A lot of people liked it. That's why I noticed when I was there in 022, that's when sports went to regionals and I was recording and get highlighting the athletes. That's when the, their brand actually took off. Just the brand itself. A lot of the athletes were sharing my, my posts, sharing my stories. Because they, they, like, they like seeing themselves scoring a 50 yard touchdown, 60 yard touchdown. Yeah. Or there's, a lot of people are sharing it. And that's how I became popular in 02, 03. The next following year, they didn't have that good of a year. I wasn't really excited because a lot of the games they were losing. I was still a big fan of them. Win, lose, or draw, I'm still a big fan of them. But when it's hard to post when they're losing. And I, 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 I was still posting. I was still posting, but I wasn't getting the same reaction. But then this year, it was uh, I had Hamoud and some guy named Khalil Bander post and share. And that's how the brand became popular. And then... That's about it. And then as far as manufacturing, I had a manufacturer I met in Detroit. That's how I met the manufacturer. I was, I was originally just putting screen prints of just Team Machine. I was, I was paying like 10 bucks for them. And I was getting the same exact ones for like that right there for like 12 bucks, 10 bucks, 11 stitch with 100% cotton. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty, Yeah, that's a big difference. For and sure. Like, and the cotton, the material alone was, was a big difference. So I was like, all right, I'm going to work with him. Created the name Humble Sports, went to Fordson, highlighted all the athletes, and that's that's how we became. That's all we're known for is highlighting athletes. And Ali, um, what made you feel like you know? All right, you know, I'm definitely gonna share this guy's stuff, and 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 you know, I respect what this guy is doing. Like, what what made you feel that way? Just him supporting us and just being out there at the games and recording us and you know just him supporting us, posting us all over and stuff. And I seen Hazimi work with him, Mo Hazimi, and that that he was like an older brother. Yeah, he's, and, uh, he he's was Kent State yeah. right now, a tight end. Yeah, he was rocking my gear. Penn State, you said? Kent State. Oh, Kent State. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's yeah, up. He was rocking my gear. He was a cool guy. Yep, very cool. I know his older brother. He, he was second. Look how good his old brother was. His brother. He was second in state in wrestling, the finals in state in wrestling, and he was second ranked lineman in Michigan. No, well, that's how good he was. An athlete. He was a fourth and two, and that's how I met him. That's how I, me and him became became good friends. And that's how I met all the athletes. I became friends with him. I never thought about going to high school athletes and say, "Hey, guy." I'm gonna record you guys. Like I don't know nobody's gonna share. And then I was like, I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Mahdi. And then Mahdi was like, oh yeah, they're gonna share your stuff. I'm gonna share your stuff. And everybody was sharing my stuff, and that's that's how I became, you know, notable, you know, humble sports. Yusuf, what are your thoughts on the whole story and what you know and everything that was just shared right now? You know, um, with Ali, you know, with him just sharing what you're doing, you know, it's a great thing because as you mentioned, you know, he's supporting what you're doing, going yeah. out to your games, recording things like that. You know, so it's great to have a partner like that because um, it can go a long way, not just yep. from the football season, just after that, you know? Yeah, networking. So networking. is huge. I'm, I don't have a lot of networking. Like, if if he doesn't go to, like, if he goes to school right now, I can get him a job at, so I work at Stellantis right now. Yeah. I can hire him at Stellantis. Like, if a if kid doesn't want to go to college and doesn't want to pay for college and doesn't have the money to pay for college, he can work at Stellantis. They have a record contract. So it's high, higher and paid. I'm sure you talked about that already. Yeah. UAW. Yeah. So we can get them jobs over there at Stellantis. Just then they pay for your school. That's that's a great thing about it. Working for the factories, they pay for your school. So we can try getting jobs there if they don't want to go to college or you know give them the hard work. So if there's a high schooler listening right now, you can hook them up. Yeah, they give us referrals. They give you guys referrals. You gotta be 18 though. It'd be after high school. You gotta be after high school. Yeah. You gotta be 18. And so what exactly would they be doing immediately? They'd probably be working online. Okay. Yeah, they be working online. And they can get free schooling? They get they get five thousand five thousand towards their schooling every semester. 
Nice. Yeah, so you can go to Henry Ford. Uh, that'll be free for Henry Ford, pretty much, right? Yeah. If I'm correct. I mean, that's not that's what the yeah. semester is looking like right now yeah. these days. Yeah, that's awesome. I went to school for a long time, but that's what I like. I try to hook them up anywhere possible, like whatever jobs I have, hook them up. For sure, Hamza. What are your thoughts on just the whole humble sports? The you know how it started and the meaning behind it. Honestly, I feel like <clears throat> it's a good idea. Honestly, I love the merch as well. Then that's a nice name. Uh, it's very catchy. People could see it and like, oh, humble sports. Like it's, it's something easy to say as well. People don't want something hard to say. And you know, if it's good on the shirt, if it's, overall, it's a good idea. I like. It. I like the colors. I like the materials. Zach, what are your thoughts? Same thing. Yeah, it's a very amazing uh, idea and everything. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I, I like the meaning behind it. Shout out to you. Uh, and so Zemzem just asked, what college do you plan on going to? I'm assuming she's talking to you, Ali, because um, Zach is not going to college and these guys are already in college. So Ali, uh, what college do you have a college in mind? Uh, and tell us why Michigan State, because it's the greatest university. But go ahead, continue. <laughs> man, Michigan is better than Michigan State. <laughs> You know, we're gonna leave yeah, that. We're gonna let yeah, that. Man. We all struggling right now, to be honest with yeah. you. Everything is the news. The news lately is uh yeah with the hardball situation. But I mean yeah. they'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. But um I don't know which college yet. You guys are gonna. I think we'll find out soon in a couple months. Can we at least get like a top five? Because people need to know the top five right now, top man. Three, you top know? three. Top nah, three. Yeah, yeah. I mean three is pushing it because now you we getting really personal with the. Not because like top five. I feel like it's wide. I mean, whatever you want to share. Do you have a? Do you have that in mind yet? Okay. Five. I don't got nothing in mind. Okay. Just, no. Hey, man, bro, just go to Wayne State, bro. <laughs> That's not what I'm. Why are you laughing, man? Well, I ain't laughing, bro. <laughs> you literally, you literally <laughs> laughing. Believe it or not, one of the best high school players from Orts and went to Wayne State. Yeah. Hasan yeah. Eamon, you ever heard of him? I have. Had, I found sounds very That's familiar. The best, one of the best Orts players I've ever seen from. I've been watching since I was a kid. That's that can play. That can play. That can play both ways. But he tore his ACL at Wayne State. Mm. It's a good school. Ain't nothing wrong with Wayne State playing for Nothing at all. I mean, yeah. dude, if I, I players, actually. if I could get a full ride scholarship and play sports yeah, at Wayne were. State, I would have done it in a heartbeat. Play full ride. I think you get, you get school paid for it going anywhere. Any, yeah. school, anywhere. Pay for your school. Whoever pays for your school full ride or have part, partial, whatever, that's where I would go. Yeah, I was going to say if you could sh change that, shift that mic towards you, like, you know, wherever. Yep, if yeah. you say, uh, that's fine. So basically what you were saying was that if any student athlete gets a full ride scholarship to any school, take that in a heartbeat. Yeah. So let me ask this question: If you were, if if you were giving advice to a high schooler, let's say he would get um, a full ride scholarship for education to like a D one school, but not for sports, yeah. but gets a full ride scholarship for sports to a D three school or D two school, which one would you recommend? That's a good question. Yeah, I know. I hit you with a tough if one. I'm right passionate about the sport. If you're really passionate and you think you're you're elite. Can you make sure that you talk like, and then I'm like, I'm if sorry. You're, if you're a very passionate and you're elite at the sport, you go to practice, you're dominant, you go to games, you're dominant, I'll go to D3 and play football and try to transfer out to a Division two school or Division one school after. But if your academics is, you know, academics is great, but if you're really, some people are really passionate about football. Like, I can't tell somebody don't play football no more. If they're really passionate about it, that's what they're going to do. Ali, I'm going to ask you the same question. Yep. I mean, I know you might be already in that situation or similar situation, but I guess what advice would you tell your friend or someone else? Um, or if it got presented to you, like you, you got offered a yeah. D1 scholarship, you know, full ride because of your academics, or, you know, you get offered D2, D3 for football, uh, which one would you take? You know, it just depends on how much you love the sport and how much you're willing to sacrifice because if you're going to go play D2 on a full ride, like you could, let me say, if you could play, Anybody will find you if you could play, but you just got to sacrifice. It's going to be hard work, like especially if you go to D2, D3, you got to at least put up at least two years of film or a year of film, and you got to be dominant on the field, transfer out, go to D1, or even out of D2, you could Grand Valley, Ferris, Wayne State, all those schools produce a lot of NFL players. But they do. Work. It's, it's changed now in the NFL, man. Like, they don't care where you're from. Uh -uh. If you can play, they're going to find you, and they'll give you the opportunity. Yusuf, what would you do in that situation? Uh, both great answers, but um, I'm still going to take the D1 academic way because um, in football... It doesn't have to be football, by the way. I know. In any sport, I mean, 
I mean, that's actually tough, man, to think about it. Because if you want to continue playing, that's what you want to do. You want to continue playing the next level in college. But if you graduate from yeah. a D3 school or D1 school, what does it matter? I thought, get, what's the, the, if you have a degree in whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. You actually you want to play for your, your passion and doing what you love to do. That's the biggest misconceptions out there is that people, it's like another one of those, you know, it's all about society and how we perceive things. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you go to the workforce, you know, and I know that that degree is the same thing in the in the employer's eyes at the end of the day. If it says Grand Valley or if it says MSU next to it, it does not make that much of a difference, if not at all. So to answer your question to me, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? But go ahead. What are you saying? I'm sorry. Uh, I do think it matters because uh, I really doesn't. I'm telling you, obviously, listen, if I'm an employer to get into those schools, then if it doesn't matter, because again, I, I just think that it's the perceived notion of it. Like, I promise you, you, you got so bosses it, and employers who graduated out of schools that are not that, you know, or I want to say D1 that are still doing their things. Oh, yeah. You would rather hire someone who graduated from Harvard than MSU. Well, would you rather but hire? I would rather hire somebody that I has mean, more experience. And, and an athlete. Athletes get hired quicker. When you tell when you tell an employer a former athlete, they show it shows dedication. It shows that you you played four years of sports that you didn't just give up. Oh, okay. I, I just I just went to school and that's all I did. Yeah. You know, I was I was a student athlete. I was a, not only was I a student, I was an athlete too, contributing to the field. Whatever you're doing, they like to Being see the that. leader on the field. Yeah, exactly. extracurricular. So let me ask. I'll tell you this. If I'm an empl- if I'm a, if I'm a boss and I'm looking at employees. And a Harvard grad who had a 3.9 GPA but didn't do too much extracurriculars. And you got somebody from MSU who had a 3.0 but played sports and also maybe interned at whatever position that they're trying to get, you know, something similar to that. I'm taking that person who has the experience. You're crazy. In a heartbeat. First off. They have the experience already. Yeah. What would you do? What would you do? Oh, no, experience is key. Having a key, no. long experience, having some experience is good. No, but I know a Harvard friend myself, and the amount of work that he put on is crazy in order. Like, he did extracurricular activity. There's no way he just did nothing in order to get into Harvard. I'm, I'm, you have to write that in your essay and everything, what you did. I'm just throwing it out there. That's who I would take if it was in front of me. What are you about to say, Zach? He's making a big it's all right. No, he's making an argument. It's good. Oh, you, man, is, uh, it's conversation. Right. It's conversation. Hamza, what are you saying? Honestly, like, if you think football, like, you want to do football as your job, bro, go to the football. You got the football scholarship. But, you know, if you want a job other than football that you don't think football is going to be your, you know, job and all that, go to the one D1 scholarship to school and study whatever you want to be. Or you can be like a football coach. What if, you're, what if you're real good at football, but you don't have the academics, the GPA to match it, to go to Harvard or go to Michigan? <laughs> uh, honestly, man, I don't even know. Wait, wait, wait. Repeat the question? If, you, if you're like a good athlete... But you don't have the academics. Like you're like two point five athlete or two point three athlete. What are you supposed to do? Like go to Michigan or Harvard? You got a full ride. Down. Like you can't get academics, I guess, on a two point three. I guess. Yeah. You Try to get don't the grades the academics. But I'm saying if you're not that bright of a student, it's tough. Harvard. I, I don't. I don't know much Harvard graduates. I don't know like maybe one, maybe. Yeah. I don't know much Harvard graduates. Zach, what would you do in that situation? Well, like if it was my choice. Yeah. That's like you know, like I said, if I want to play football like that bad, I'll go play football. You know. All right. Well, there you go. We're going to run our second ad before we continue on the questions. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give a shout out to Juicebox, Ramsey. Shout out to Juicebox. Shout out to Hakeem and everyone over there at Juicebox. We appreciate them. Uh, if you're at home, feel free to ask any questions that you'd like. We have the comments right here in front of us. And if you want to call in, the number is 313-306-1750. So we're going to go ahead and give a shout out to Juicebox. And we're going to continue on with the show. All right, Yusuf, I want you to envision this with me, okay? Imagine you just had a long day at work, and all you want is a nice, cool, refreshing drink to top it all off. Do you know where you stop by at, Yusuf? It's got to be Juice Box. It's definitely Juice Box. If you're looking for a place with the best smoothies, milkshakes, ice cream, cereal bars, and slushies, then Juice Box is your one-stop shop. You can try things like their Biscoff or Nutella shakes, crepes, watermelon blasts, strawberry burst, or mango smoothies. And if you're looking for a place to hang out, they have a comfortable outdoor patio slash courtyard area that you and your friends can enjoy while trying those delicious drinks. So be sure to stop by Juicebox. They have a Hamtramck location right there on Joso Campo with more locations coming soon. You'll be sure to leave there with a big smile on your face. You'll also be able to order your drinks from the new Juicebox app, which will also be coming soon. 
It will be downloadable on all of your smartphone devices. All of high school. All right, so shout out to these fellas right now having a good conversation talking about, you know, different scenarios of school and college. So we actually got somebody named Haha ha Baba. All right, I don't know if you know someone named Haha ha Baba, but shout out to Haha ha Baba. You know, a lot of these people are actual people that you may know, but then their usernames on YouTube just, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, it could be something like Haha ha Baba. So with that said, Haha ha Baba, I wanted to ask you, if you don't end up in football, what would you want to major in? It's actually a great question. Uh, I still don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay. Football, football got all my focus right now. Do you are you passionate about something like outside of football that you think that all right maybe I have a future in this as well? I mean I'm good with cars. Okay. I grew up around cars. My whole family works on cars, but How that's probably something I would do. But I don't know yet. How about coaching? Coaching, I don't know. Probably maybe when I'm older. Hopefully when I'm done with football. Yeah. Yeah. Coaching ain't easy, man. No. It ain't easy, man. Uh -uh. Like you gotta be, you gotta really be oh. passionate about. Yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta be dedicated. Uh, we, we we always had a debate on coaching. What yeah. do you think is? Uh, no, you you can say it, Zach. Like the percent a percent of. Oh, this of is a great team. one. Yeah, yes, this, we've been arguing team, this. The team this, wins a championship, right? Yeah. How much percent did the coaches get and the players? My theory is, coaches don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like seventy thirty. That, that's the part players. Of the the, the players do the that's play. True. The players catch the. You know what I'm saying? So like. So he's saying it's like 70, 30, 70 players, thirty percent coaches. No, don't try to change your answer. My man said ninety ten at first, uh, and I started yeah. arguing with him, <laughs> and then he went down to seventy thirty. Now he want to change it, but what would you give a percent to the coaches? What percent would you give to the players? I think I would give like probably 50 50 that's what i said yeah 50 50 yeah. Really. 50 50 man he really taught you man the, he taught yeah you. the coaches man it takes a lot from the coaches to be there every single day as long as we're there like coach and the coaches got to do extra they do a lot more than we do like we just got to go out there and perform that's the fun part yeah that's the fun part of it i mean going out there and perform i mean it's not easy but that's the fun part of it yeah. but the coaches gotta they gotta plan the practices throughout the week they gotta plan all the all the game stuff like how the travel stuff i mean it's not easy they probably they got people for it in the nfl but i'm talking about high school and stuff they don't really got people for it like that oh so, so with that right you said 50 50 yeah and how you're saying high school so do you feel like what is more like what what's a better accomplishment winning a championship in the nfl or high school for the coaches sake uh, do you uh, think i mean Probably the NFL. Yeah, come on. You said, hold on. It's the NFL. It's the NFL. The NFL. Because it's a whole worldwide. My fault. I wrote it wrong. I'm saying what is tougher to accomplish or what's harder to accomplish? NFL professional players, they already they already know how to play. They're yeah, yeah. out there balling. Yeah, but you got professional you coaches, though. In the high school, no, man. It's different. Hold on, hold on. Professional coaches. But still, when the coaches, it takes a lot from the coaches, even in the NFL, to take to run a whole program. Man, oh, man, you got the so NFL, many people. The NFL, the NFL is my theory. Where's the best? Huh? The NFL, they're superstars. That's where they're. The I mean, coaches, yeah, it's easier as don't coaches. Matter. Yeah, it's easier matter. as a coach in the yeah. NFL. Yeah. I think than probably college football. And you got and so high many coaches football. for every position. What are your yeah. thoughts, bro? That's a guy. I never played football. I <laughs> couldn't tell you, man. It's tough. That's a tough one. I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be football. In general, like whenever you see a team performing, how much of the credit would you give to the coaches and how much of the credit would you give to the players? Like, do you think it's 70 30 players, 50 50? I think 60% of the players. Okay. 40 of mm -hmm. the coaches. Okay. I so, but we got another person asking what school you went to. He, he's undecided or he doesn't want to share it yet. I think he has like a big thing planned, Ali Hamoud. So, Zach, right? Yeah. Let's say, um, let's say, no, I'm sorry, not minute. Let's say a football team goes undefeated. Yeah. Next year, Zach is coaching. Same player. Do they do good? No. No? Not at all. Uh, really? 100% not. And that's 100%. the difference between coaches. I mean, we have plenty of examples in the league, in professional same sports. Player, same hold team, on, hold on, all You know, experience. that. Hold on, hold on. Why I say no so Great. fast? Like, I'm not a coach or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting you out. Like, a, a random person, a whole new person comes in. Right. It takes... You got to build a relationship with the players. Facts. But they the already players. had. The players know each other. It doesn't matter. Players, so you and the coach, the coach could come in and mess everything yeah. up. The whole exactly. culture, he can mess up all the situations that's happening. I can't believe Zach still believes 70-30. But I really did have somebody ask what school you're going to. But, you know, obviously you said you don't know that yet. Uh, so he's still uh, undecided uh, on that. So, like, say if he was guarding me, I'm, like, I'm in the, like, you know, slot, you know. Am I getting off the line? No. Nah. <laughs> 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 oh, come on, man. 
Hey, the quarterback we looking at is that he's still struggling <laughs> get off the line. The quarterback not even going to look. Oh. Yeah, he's not even going to look. He see Ali Hamoud lined up over there. I'm staying away. He's not looking. He's saying say, Hamoud Island over there. <laughs> you got to watch, watch out for Hamoud Island. Now, real talk. I'll be able to get off you for a few. <laughs> no, I, can have, I can have you as a quarterback, you know. I'm gonna nah, point at man, your feet look slow. I'm wearing baggy pants. My feet slow. look slow. Hey, that's funny. So we're going to go continue on with, you know, can you share with us your experience of MMA and jiu-jitsu? Like, how was that like for you? And, you know, you know. It was very, a lot of good memories. I had a lot of good memories. Yeah. Going from high school wrestling to MMA, jiu-jitsu, boxing. I made a lot of good friends, a lot of good memories. Built a lot of confidence in myself walking the streets. That's what MMA teaches you. You can learn every sport in the world, but nothing like MMA. Like you can learn football, basketball, but that when you go to the street, that, that's what transitions like real life is MMA. Because you never know. You might be with your girl walking one day, and the guy might smack her in the butt, you know. And you gotta go, what are you gonna do? Just walk away or just keep going? Sometimes some guys fight, some guys walk away. We're three guys. Then you gotta fight. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It's a, it's a great example. No, because you see videos like that online. You see videos like that online. I guess they're laughing at the example that was being used right now. Uh, but all jokes aside, it's true. Um, it, 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 stuff like that you have to consider. You know, or <laughs> protecting your family. Zach, what's going on, Zach? Or protecting your family in general. But um, so you know, what was your record? You know, what was your overall I was record? I was five and zero MMA, and I was nineteen and three in jiu jitsu. This guy, man. This guy. Hamza, what are your thoughts on MMA Jiu Jitsu? Can you see yourself doing it? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, MMA, I don't, I don't know, bro. Like, just the injuries I'll be, I'll be looking at, like, they be cutting. Yeah, it's dangerous, bro. It's dangerous, man. Like, you know, like, I feel like if you grew up in, like, in a fighting family, like, if you fight all your life, I feel like it'd be good for you since, you know. But honestly, I'd probably go into more into boxing instead <laughs> of those. It's a l- more safer. No, nah. boxing's not safer. Oh, man. Boxing's think not so? safer. It's, it's not. safer than more MMA. Head, no, it's not. It's more head damage, more upper body damage. Yeah. It's all straight upper body level. Thing is, about me, I can move, you know what I'm saying? No, I like, think everybody can move until... My head movement isn't like, you know what I'm I saying? Like, I think being Hamza's record in boxing is 6-0, right? Bro, I I'm, beat you every single time we box, bro. I think I'm 6-0. Oh. I, 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 I injured this. Have you ever seen a boxing gym? Nah. No boxing gym? Nah, I just... Guys, if you haven't picked up on it, Zach is all a lot of talking. We call we what I call where I come from is bakbaka. All right, there's like you know those chickens that be bakbaka and you know they do bakbaka. You, know, you know Eli Apple. That's chicken right? Yeah, that's Eli Zach. Apple. That's Zach. Talking. What are you saying, man? Nothing else. You said it was like Hollywood Jones with everybody looking at. Hey, I'll take it. Or Eagles. Yeah. Eagles. Nine there nine you go. Hollywood Jones. All right. Someone asked first of all, who's your favorite NFL team? All right. Favorite NFL team. Other than the Lions, I hope. Yeah, I like the Lions, but I like um, I really like whatever team's got nice DBs. The Jets, I like the Jets. I like the Dolphins. Temple Bay. Because of Jalen Ramsey. The Sauce. <laughs> um, probably the, I'll probably take both Jets and the uh, Dolphins. Are you a Lions fan, though? Yeah. Yeah, you watch the Lions or you just, okay. No, what Lions. do you think about the Lions this year, man? Man, the Lions won again. Something yeah. Say, the Lions <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just, I mean, they just keep winning. Do you think they can go far? Man, they're winning the Super Bowl. There you go. I'm happy you say that. I'm happy you say that, all right? Uh, good luck in the future, Ali. So proud of your hard work, said Batul, Batul Hamoud. All right, I'm sure he's probably related. That's my mom. Oh, wow. Shout out to the mom. All right, That's, she's related. I'm sorry about that. And then Yahya Hamoud, by the way, was the one that asked the question about your favorite NFL team. Is that That's my little cousin. Little cousin. So shout out to Yahya and Batul as well. You really think Ramsey is the best in the league? Oh, uh, yeah. Over, I disagree. Over Sertan. I think Sertan is the best corner uh, in the league. Well, he just came back. But I think overall, when he was like in his prime. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, really? easily the best in the league. I think he, for like two, three years, Ramsey was number one easily. And he's coming back. Right? First game back, he had an interception. He was locking down. Yeah. That's his first game back to, off a of torn um, Gordon meniscus. Right? Yeah. 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 So shout Pastor out to... Pastor is real tough, though. I still he think... Is. Pastor Tain is really tough. And I mean, you got Sauce still to you me. You got Sauce, is. Sauce, DJ Reed. Yeah. yeah. You got all of them. Yeah, there's some, there's some good corners. I Xavier Howard is the best in the Dolphins. Yeah. Xavier Howard... No, no, he's not. Jalen Ramsey's Ramsey is better than... Him. I think Ramsey's he's better He's tough, than him. too. Howard, he, There's some he good corners, everything, man. man. So we're going to talk about this question since we're already kind of diving into it. And if you're at home, you're watching, I want to hear your answers as well. And that is boxing, MMA, or jiu-jitsu. So we had a boxing coach yeah. here about a couple months ago you know Hamoud uh, Ali Hamoud Ali no it wasn't no. 
Ali right here. <laughs> <man. laughs> he's still in there. Uh, I forgot the gym that he's working at right now, but we can go, uh, Instagram. What's his name? All right, quick. But long story short, uh, he came on here and he explained how boxing is the toughest one out of the three. Well, uh, it was only boxing versus MMA. Yeah. All right, we ain't talk about jujitsu. So now we have an MMA jujitsu person okay. probably ready to defend MMA and jujitsu. So what do you feel like is the toughest sport out of those three? Boxing, MMA, or jiu-jitsu? See, MMA is jiu-jitsu and boxing is part of MMA. It's a martial art. You got to know, you know many martial arts for, for MMA. It's a bigger playbook. You got to know jiu-jitsu. You got to know wrestling. You got to know boxing. You got to know Muay Thai. Just knowing boxing is not good enough in a fight. Mm. Just You can be the most elite boxer. You can be Floyd Mayweather. There's a reason why MMA guys go to boxing and boxing don't go to MMA. There's a reason why behind mm. that. Kind of did it. Kind of went to... Connor fought Floyd. He went all. He went the distance. That will not happen if Floyd went to MMA and fought Connor. He wouldn't make it out the first round. That's true. That, that just shows you how dominant MMA is in yep. a fight. So I long story short, it's bigger playbook. It's MMA hard. is the hardest yeah, yeah, of them all. It has to be Floyd to go, bro. I, I feel like he did good. In, in no, you, you, I mean, if he yeah, started as a kid, he's like five it, five or something. Bro, it's like the same five, way, seven. bro. Connor and him, the one forty five, they both fought at forty five. Man, Connor would have killed him. In Listen, the I feel like if he got at least one more training, toughest sport out of them all. Oh, um, MMA. Uh, MMA, yeah, because you got to learn everything. But I think Connor would have killed. Oh, nah. would have killed him. MMA, yeah, bro, MMA is one month, one month <laughs> training. Man, I promise you, he, he, he would for, not. He could have trained for years. All he needs is hands, bro. I'm telling you now, bro. Hey, you watched the Logan Dillon fight? Yeah. So Dillon would have killed him, uh, Logan, right? MMA? No, Logan. no, hell no. Because Logan wrestled. Yeah. yeah. Logan wrestled. But not too. MMA wrestled. He just wrestled. He wrestled, man. Dillon. He knows how to hold himself, though. He's big as hell, man. But yeah, he, but he does WWE, would. man. Low Zach, what are Logan your answers? Logan wrestling WWE. Bro, what well, was he has answered? MMA or M boxing? MMA is like a fight. It's just a normal fight. It's not no skill. No well, skill. No, it's not. Like, Don't say that, Zach. <laughs> Don't say that. We can't defend you, Zach. They, they call him machine back then. Nah, as soon as he said that, I was like, damn. Bye bye. I said no skill. Yeah, you're going to have some MMA no, people in here cussing you out, Zach. I'm just saying, like, it's just like it's just normal fight. There's no like really no rules. It's just fight. It's, it's the science Bro, behind it. If you man. really watch it, if you shoot, if you train for like a Bro, year, then you watch it, watch a film, you you see everything. Like, wow, that's a nice single leg takedown. That's a nice double leg takedown. That's a nice jab. That's a nice kick, low leg kick to the leg. You see everything. You you see it a lot different. If you, if you never trained in it before. That's why you don't. Really, you think it's just a regular street fight. Two guys going along a haywire. It's not. It's, it's an art. So I mean, you in the octagon, you just going for my legs. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> once, you, once you slam me, what's going on? I'll, I'll work my I feel, like, I feel like that's the humble and, and, and Dean right here saying that right now, by the way. What if I just keep on running around the octagon? Like, you know, chase me? will kick you out, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take what you, I ain't gonna lie. What's the toughest sport to you in your eyes? Bare knuckle, bro. Bare knuckle. Bare knuckle, Bare knuckle man. Mm -hmm. Between I mean, boxing, just, MMA, or jiu jitsu? Oh, MMA, MMA, for sure. Yeah. For sure? Yeah, Yusuf, same it's answer? It's hard to become yeah, a champion. It. It's hard to become a champion in boxing than MMA. I googled that. Actually. I feel like I could take you. I ain't gonna lie. Sorry, it's harder. <laughs> like in the MMA. You think you take me? Yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to settle this. Uh, <laughs> like, game, I ain't gonna lie. No, no. You have to come out of retirement, bro, man. Because I trained. I trained. These guys wrestling. talk a lot. These I'm guys talk a lot. Thing is, that I'm a good wrestler. How many years you train wrestling? Two months. No, 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 no. <laughs> two days. Two days. No, 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 <laughs> no. It's been like it's been a year. I've been in the gym, you know, boxing, wrestling, all that. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like I, I'll do good. What the hell? I don't think so. I would be good, bro. The thing is, bro, I'm good at wrestling. I know how to move. I know how to like. Listen, these guys don't like confidence. That's why I like them. All right, they don't like confidence, which is good. good. But it can get them hurt as well, or get them in trouble at least. But you know Zach, what I'm you saying? 100 percent feel like MMA is nothing. Nah, I want to say it's nothing, but. But I'm saying it's not. You're not more, saying it's more not. skill boxing. You know, it's like boxing you get a. No boxing, just hands. How's that more? Why skill? do you think? Y'all were quiet when the coach was here talking that one time defending why boxing. Now y'all. Why do you think Habib was so dominant? Huh? Why do you think Habib was so dominant? What was he known for? Ground game, Yeah, right? taking people down, you know, but that's like... Dang. Why? Why he, Everyone knew he was going to do that and he still was able to do it. Why? Bro, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you have some tough questions. It's skill, bro. It's, come on, yeah. bro. Ali, you played football. Oh, yeah, he, you said call Sadiq. He's calling. All right, here we go. Here we go, um, Sadiq. You, Sadiq. I know... Yeah, Sadiq Bey. <laughs> Shout out to Sadiq. <laughs> we got Sadiq Bey, aka the Kuzo. Yusuf called you out, Sadiq. He said, "Why don't you call Sadiq?" Because, uh, yeah, I know you hear the conversation right now. By the way, hey, turn up. Make sure I to turn up. I don't up. believe this right now. Yeah, I know, I know. So, 
Talk to us, Sadiq. You know, what is the toughest sport out of the three between boxing, MMA, and jiu-jitsu, and why is it MMA? <laughs> okay, well, 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 first of all, we'll just compare boxing and MMA because jiu-jitsu is actually in MMA. Okay. So, man, uh, by far MMA, man, uh, it's not even close. Yeah, boxing is just one element of the whole, you know, sport, you know, fighting. You're only using your hands, you know. Yeah, you got some footwork involved, but you, you talk about MMA, you're using your legs, you're, you're, you're wrestling, you're grappling, you're trying to submit somebody, you're using your hands. Everything, elbows, knees. I agree. It's a whole different ball game. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's picking up and it's, it's so much more popular. Uh, popular than boxing right now. So, you know. And boxing has been around a lot longer since the start of time. So Connor and, and, and Mayweather, when they, when they boxed, obviously Mayweather won. Okay. Uh, so do you think it would be close if Mayweather went into MMA or do you think it would be total domination? He would be out in, in, in probably the first minute. And I'm being real with you, man. Forget Connor, forget Mayweather. We just had a fight not even a month ago with Tyson Fury and Ngannou. Yeah. My man Ngannou's from MMA. Tyson Fury is arguably the best heavyweight boxer of all time. They're comparing him to Ali. Got They're saying he's the best. <laughs> yeah, Rob, and, yeah. and, and Ngannou yeah, dropped him, right. beat him a couple rounds. and they, You know what I'm saying? That just shows. He doesn't even box. He, he does all MMA, but you put him in, in the best person's sport, and you see what happens. Facts. Got his face mask I agree. Go ahead. What are you about so, to say, so, Zach? So, Zach, yeah, Zach, Zach man, you, you just got to try it first, man, before you say what's what. Sadak, I beat you in UFC 4 uh, twice last week. I think our record Oh, Sadak doesn't want to talk about our record, UFC nah, 4. Nah, nah, nah. Sadak, what's our record? Y'all talk about games now, man. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about practice. <laughs> It's not about practice. Not the game, practice. All right, so yeah, the first thing I heard Zach, I heard Zach talking crazy. I was like, yeah, give my hat to the Yeah, you had to call in. Uh, Sal, any final words, final yeah. comments? I, I love what you guys doing, man. And uh, I was just driving and I was listening to you guys, so I had to just you know call in and give my put and my input. For sure, for sure. Well, appreciate you, Sal, for the call in. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you soon, inshallah, Kazo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, well, there we go. I guess that kind of settled it right there. Um, uh, I'm trying to look at it. I'm going to throw in football. Does that change your answer? All right, if I threw in football in the category between MMA, boxing, jiu-jitsu, and football, I mean, you know, when you're in the trenches and you know how it is, especially those two days of the summer and it ain't easy, does that change your answer or is MMA still number one in your eyes? Um, I mean, I know MMA. It would be, stop. It wouldn't even be boxing. Boxing wouldn't even oh, yeah. be in it. It would be between MMA and football. Uh, but, I mean, it depends for what you're training for. Like, like for a lineman. Lineman, you know, they they put in that work. Yeah. I don't know. That's tough. It's, it's more a team they, game on football. Yeah. Everybody got to be on point. Not just not just you. You can't put all the yeah. work in and everybody else is just dumb. And you. Everybody yeah. got to be putting the work. Everybody got to be on the one team, on the one page. But MMA, it's you and your coach, you and your whatever you train with. And just it's yourself, you're on like an island, you and the guy, and whatever you work on, whatever you coach, treat, uh, train, do, that's what you're going after. Yeah, I think, I think physically, I don't know actually. I think they're both tough. Yeah, they are, I think man. Amaze a little bit tougher because you're really in there by yourself. But at the point of football, if one person messes up on defense, the coverage is basically blown. Yeah, or if one lineman messes up on offense quarterback getting sacked or something the whole play yeah. is whole disrupted is team game yeah it's, yeah, it's just because it's a team game it's i don't feel like game. it's harder than yeah uh, i think i'm amazed a little tougher hamud 101 said hamud best boxer in that room so he's just calling it out right now all right so just want to throw that out there uh hamud 101 said hamud is the best boxer in that room right now so shout out to hamud 11 we're going to run our final ad of today, Ramsey. We're going to go ahead and give a shout out to Hanley International Academy, the school, the middle K-8 school that all these guys got promoted from. So shout out to Hanley International Academy. And then we're going to go into the questions game. And then we're going to get some weekend motivation from these two as well. Uh, so shout out to Hanley International Academy. And then we're going to keep things rolling. You know, Yusuf, you seem like a pretty smart man. What elementary slash middle school did you get promoted from? The one and only Hanley International Academy. Hanley International Academy is a school that treats every student and staff like their own family. 
It's even in their vision statement. Educating your child like our own. Their location is 2400 Denton Street, Hamtramck, Michigan. Their phone number is 313-875-8888. The academics there are great. The athletics there are great. Thank you to the staff and administrators at Hanley for educating our leaders of tomorrow. All right. Yeah. A good quote for my motivational speech. For sure. Yeah, so get that ready. All right, so here's a questions game, okay? So let me just quickly explain this if you want to put the buzzer. Yep, there you go. Put the buzzer between you two. And then Yusuf, you might have to sit this one out because uh, Hamza and Zach will do this. So Hamza and Zach, you guys put that next to you uh, as well in the middle of you guys, the both of you guys. So the way that this works is, you know, at the end, we try to... And by the way, uh, good luck because it was nothing that I said. Uh, I didn't say anything about any of this stuff. So really just like, you know, try your best to come up with answers. Yeah. So with that said, what I'm trying to say is I asked a question. You hit the buzzer. You get the answer correct. You get one point. You get it wrong. You get a minus point. So my advice is if you don't know the answer, don't hit the buzzer because then you're going to get a minus point because you have to say an answer if you hit the buzzer. All right. Best out of three. So just three questions. Very simple, straightforward, and to the point. I'm sorry. I usually say these answers during the show. But I think if you just knew the sport, generally, you will know the answers. So number one. A football problem. True and false. Oh, true. Okay. You got 50% chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> Right. Oh. <laughs> true or false <laughs> alright and by the way you gotta let me finish the question cause they gonna argue and they gonna yell that we ain't let you finish the question and that's what they do they argue with me a lot in MMA okay. are strikes to the spine or back of the head or neck area allowed it's me it's me who got it oh look at the camera I mean it's a little oh, delayed bro. let's see who smacked it it's a little Clearly delayed I got, right. got that by four it's a little delayed <clears throat> Oh, yeah, he got it, he got it. Who got it? All right, Zach, we're going to let true or false. You're with Christian or no? No. Oh, man. Uh -huh. I know, but I just don't know what you said. You go on, man. Hurry up. Can I repeat it for him? No. Yes, you can. You got five seconds, Zach, or we're going to give them a chance to answer. No, they're not allowed. Is it true or false? They're not, they're not allowed, but I don't know which one did you say, though. Oh, well, you didn't even know the question. True, no. true. I don't know. The answer is false. All right. All, <laughs> go ahead and uh, do we have anything to like laugh at him or something? I told you don't hit it unless you know. It, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we got it. We got that. Yeah, that's I was, so I was, I was gonna say you false. You guys are terrible. I didn't know what you said. I, they're not allowed, but I was gonna say false. <laughs> in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say not, false. Bro. In MMA, are strikes to the spine or back of the head or neck area allowed? Bro. Not allowed. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I, I just didn't know if they said like they're not allowed or like I didn't know what you said. Well, guess what? You know that your team is at minus one right now. All right? I just want to throw that out there. Number two. We got it. Trust, trust, trust. Trust, trust. True or false? Yep. Can you slam someone in jujitsu? It's me, right? Oh, no, camera, camera, camera. It's me, bro. There you go. Can you slam someone in jujitsu? It's me, bro. That was awesome, bro. That was awesome. Come on, bro. <laughs> Who got it? Who got it, Ramsey? <laughs> Who's the two? Coach? No. Correct. It is false. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, I know you were. I knew you were. I was going to say, yeah. give him a round of applause. There. <laughs> just a question. No, it wasn't. That was an MMA, MMA question. One of MMA, one was Jiu Jitsu. This one was Jiu Jitsu. Oh, that was Jiu All right, here we go. Number three has to do with branding, and I know I didn't mention this, so try to use your brains. You know what? The score is one to minus one. We're going to give this a two point question. All right, bro. Just so y'all can finish in a tie. If y'all get it, if not, you guys can smack them, okay? Because I didn't mention this during the show, so you have to use your context clues. Blank is key when branding yourself, and it starts with the letter A. <laughs> what is, what is it? Oh, boy. I got it, I got it. So this is so blank is key. I'm only reading it because I'm reading it. Blank is key when branding yourself and it starts with the letter A. Advertisement. Good job. What are you doing? <laughs> Go ahead and give him the fart noise, no please. Way, bro. <laughs> That's bro. what I think about your answer, bro. Good answer though. Advertisement. Good answer. No way, it's not advertisement. I thought I was right. Authenticity. Oh well, I can't even say it right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, yeah, authenticity. Was, all right, was, being authentic. That? All right, that is important to branding yourself, as you probably know, because being authentic is you know being yourself. You know, like the, I think the biggest question that people need to know in branding yourself is what separates you, or what makes you different than everybody else. You know, as you know, 
this clothing, I mean, clothes or everybody has clothing brands. So what makes Humble Sports different? And you explained yourself earlier in the show about, you know, why you chose Humble Sports and all that. I mean, listen, this is all from Google, right? I look up stuff and they said authenticity is the most important thing when branding yourself. So shout out to these guys. Give them a round of applause to Ali and Coach Dean. I cheated, in man. the building I cheated, doing man. their things they get a round of applause they got the victory uh so i'm gonna give you a little bit more time as i tell people that are watching at home by the way we got a couple of people hamoud oh we did that hamza go at football said yusuf Nagy. all right, right and then mr know, anonymous man. said advertising that's not true by the way yusuf Nagy, how much did hamza pay you to say that by the way we want to know that at home all right how much did hamza pay you to say that Same, bro. all right with that said First of all, shout out to Ali and to Dean. We appreciate them for coming on the show and having a good time and, you know, uh, sharing their knowledge that they did. If you're at home, be sure to follow us on all of our socials. You have YouTube, Oz Media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok under Oz Media. Again, you can listen to our shows later on Apple and Spotify podcast under Oz Media. Uh, shout out to Nader and Sadak for calling in. For anyone that wants to call in, future reference, the number is 313-306-1750. And if you're at home, Message us on social media, Instagram, Facebook. You guys recommend somebody that wants to come on our show. We were talking to Ali about this earlier. Like, we love to have, you know, the youth involved. This is what the Movement Podcast is about, strictly for youth. If we have an adult on the show, it's because they work with the youth or they help out the youth. So this is all youth-based. Anyone that you feel like high schoolers that are doing great things in the community or college kids that are doing great things, you know, reach out. You know, we'll, we'll get them on the show. Uh, shout out to the sponsors, Balkan House, Juice Box, Lava House, BC Adhesives, Specialty Medical Center, Hanlington National Academy, and Sid B's. Yusuf, you're about to say something. What are you about to say, Yusuf? Quick question, Ali. Uh, yeah. but let's say you're in a football game, right? I'm yep. going to put you like in a scenario. Yep. So you're playing the game, uh, fourth quarter. Uh, you need a score, right? You, yep. you need a score. You guys are down by like, I don't know, like six or something. Um, it's third. It's fourth down. You stop. They're, they're at their own 15-yard line, right? You're yep. playing defense, right? Yep. Uh, it's, um, it's four down, so uh, I'm sorry. It's a tie game, so the f it's four down. They want to go for it. Yeah, at their own 15 yard line. Their own 15 yard line. Fourth You're inches. playing defense. Yep. <laughs> um, and then yeah, it's a pass play. Yep. They throw it deep to the 50 yard line. Yeah. You're gonna try to return it back. Are you yeah, trying to intercept yeah. it, or are you gonna try to deflect the ball down? You're at the 50. Um. Because they're they're at their own 15. It depends. If the ball's coming straight to me, I'm intercepting it. And I'm returning it. Think so? Yeah. Because it's a tie if game. If you don't score, it's going to overtime. That's fine. No, I'm sorry. Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, you're doing too much scenarios, yeah, man. You had to think about yeah, the yeah. scenario beforehand. Yeah, yeah. If I, I'm returning it. Well, I mean, if I could intercept it for sure without him catching it, I'm returning. But if I got to swat it, I got to swat it. What if you get dropped? Like, as soon as you. The reason why he's mentioning it is because if you swat it, it'll be at the 15 yard line for I you guys, offense, you know, yeah, for your offense, because he said fourth down. So that's why he's asking that question. Because you watch in the NFL sometimes where, you know, it's fourth down, yeah. the quarterbacks launch it, and sometimes it's better for them to just swat it down because then they get the ball, yeah. obviously, from where they left off at. So that's why he's asking you this question Would you intercept the ball? Or and get a chance to return it, maybe get past the fifteen yard line, or would you swat it down so that your offense can get the ball at the fifteen yard line? I mean, it's probably gonna be like four go routes, like streaks. Probably everybody's gonna be downfield already. So if I could get the ball, I don't gotta beat that many people. I mean, I'm faster than the linemen, so I might be able to return it. It really depends. If I'm catching the ball and I see everybody and it's a big pile, I'll swat it down. Get the ball on the 15. Great point. I think also momentum, right? Let's yeah. say you're coming forward. Yeah. You can pick it off. Your momentum is already yeah. going. Let's say you're going backwards and yeah, trying to no. catch the ball. You know, you're probably going to be falling back. Yeah. It's probably best to do catch it and fall. Yeah. I'm swatting it. I'm yeah. Swat it. For sure. Uh -huh. Zach will intercept it just for the stats, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, I had, I had like 15 interceptions. The flight for butt league. My man. <laughs> Zach's stats are... Uh, Tainted. Abdullah Saleh said Ali Hamoud is a go at football. All right. So Ali Hamoud getting the shout outs, um, you know, being one of the best football players, uh, especially best DBs. So there, okay. go ahead. What do you about to say? I was going to say, is there like the hardest player you had to check? Do you know my name? Um, it's going to be me. After this week. <laughs> Not really in games, uh -huh. no. But in seven on seven season, we had a, we had a couple. There was a couple people, but not really in game. All right. With that said, let's start off with you, Dean. Weekend motivation. Like I said, I'm. My uh, weekend motivation is, is by Tupac. Every dark night, there's a brighter day. So, whatever you're going through, anything hard times, just keep fighting. It's going to get better.
There you go. Shout out to Dean and then Ali Hamoud. What is your weekend motivation for the people out there? Oh, my weekend motivation is if you see a vision, you want to do something, just pursue it. Sacrifice whatever you got to sacrifice and just do it. Do whatever you got to do and go one to know every day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Go ahead and give him a round of applause. Thank you. Go, go one to know every day. Shout out to Ali Hamoud. Shout out to Dean Nasser. Seriously, all jokes yeah, aside. No, seriously, no. For all, yeah, for sure. Uh, Hamza, the best out of the six, said Yusuf Nagy. All right, you know. So we got like a, we got a friends battle <laughs> going on in the comment section. Final words, final comments, Zach. We'll just go around like this, starting off with you, Zach. Any final words, final comments? A uh, great show, and I think we need to do our ones uh, outside. <laughs> and, uh, I think we got boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah, boxing gloves in the back. Right. <laughs> Hamza, final words, final comments. Yeah, it's been a good show. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show, man. Hopefully, you know, you'll get to college and be D1. Appreciate it. Hold on, man. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yusuf. Great play. No, we have those. Uh, first of all, great show. 100%. Yep. Thank you guys for coming on. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you for having us. Uh, you know how you got those challenges, though? Yeah. Those football challenges. We're going to have to get Fortson. We're going to have to get a Fortson versus uh, Team Fortson versus Team Hamtramck football football game Sorry. and record it and, and post it. If you could get, gather up some uh, postseason. Oh, they, 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 they're getting beat, bro. They're getting beat, bro. Watch out, bro. Whoever your QB is, I promise you I could be better. <laughs> and then receiving-wise, I'm probably up there. Um, we got both our quarterbacks, Maz and um, Mubarak, ready to, ready to work, you guys. We might have to make that happen. Well, I'll be down. I'll be down <laughs> to uh, I'd love to watch that. Play. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a fun game. Um, You know, just a 7-on-7. Seven seven. It'll be obviously flag. It wouldn't be nothing. Yeah. Because, you know, we ain't trying to have anybody get hurt or anything. Okay. Yusuf, Thabits, are oh, you ready, sir? with your yeah, final yeah. comments is uh dean any final words final comments Thanks man for having us a great show you guys are doing a great job keep up the great work and, mm -hmm. it. and then ali uh thank you for having us yep uh thank you for everybody that watched joined in oh yeah i think uh, yeah that's it yeah shout out to you guys at home too we appreciate you guys uh thank you so much this is what we do every saturdays we go live at noon uh if you like sports sundays 11 30 and then you know we even have a weekday show typically on tuesdays around six o'clock that's more community based where we have guests you know like rashida and summer and connie and everyone else that are in the community this is Oz Media. Thank you for tuning in. This was Season 3, Episode 9 of The Movement. The, the movement. movement. The Movement. We are officially live. We'll see you all next week. Same time. Have a good rest of the day.